What's up, bitches? Yeah. How's my audio core? Does it sound good? Yeah, you sound better. Okay, I think I gotta get like super up close to this mic, so it looks like I'm filleting it. <laughs> I think I could hold it though. Oh, look at that! I'm getting fancy, huh? That's what the basketball players do. Like fucking, uh, I think Dwayne Wade started it. He used to take the microphone off the press conference like thing and just hold it during his press conference. Uh huh. And I'll be like, that looks so uncomfortable because you're sitting up there for like 15 minutes no, when there's, there's a stand for the shit. Yeah, no, it is. I feel like an idiot. I like lean back like this and I was like, no, I, <laughs> no, just no. I'd rather have worse sound and put it in front of me. <laughs> That's also a diesel ass microphone. Yeah, I know. I got just, the same shit though. Yeah. Let's just do this for the whole segment. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks super <laughs> awkward. <laughs> yeah. So I got mad stuff I want to talk about. Um, just... First of all. Uh, this thought came to me the other day. Why the fuck do musicals exist? <laughs> yeah, you know what it's... I mean? Like musicals, like Broadway shows. It's like, oh, we're going to go hear that thing where they, the people just prance around on stage and tell a story while they're singing. I don't, I don't, is it just because I'm a dick? Is it, and I'm like not cultured that I look at that and I'm like, that just looks ridiculous to me. Or, or, or am I on to something here? Is it like something that people pretend to like in order to feel like they're more cultured? You know what I'm saying? I think people... Oh, hold on, I'm trying to get this fucking sound in my headphones. Oh, you can't hear me in your headphones? Oh, hold on. Hold on, I think I got it. Something Say just something. changed. I just heard Yeah, let's change. go. <laughs> That's so much better. Oh, okay. Was I coming in low? Is that what that was the problem? No, you were coming in off the laptop instead of like then I would just be wearing these for cool effect. <laughs> <laughs> so did you hear what I said about musicals or no? I can't yeah, it. I think musicals are corny as shit, and I usually fall asleep through all of them. But you're right. I don't know why people like them. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't get it either. And also, I'm gonna go even further now, and I'm gonna go into a realm where I know I'm gonna be wrong. But I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> like classical music. Like, I get it if if you're a certain age and like if you were if you were raised on it and you know you were you've been hearing it your entire life. Mm -hmm. Like, I get it. And and okay, so that's your kind of music. I can dig it. Like, that's what that's what you do. But if somebody was like raised on the stuff you and me were raised on, and then. That they, they try to hit you with when they're like 25, 26, like, you know, I just started listening to classical music. No, bitch. No, you didn't. No, no, you didn't. You're saying that because you want to be like, oh, I've graduated. I'm now yep. more cultured and I actually, uh, I've developed unlike you. You still enjoy, you know, whatever, fucking Beyonce and the Backstreet Boys. Yeah. Oh, that's such, that's child's play. I now listen to Mozart. No, you don't. <laughs> you just say you do because you want to feel better about yourself. Now, but the thing is, like, it, I mean, I guess it could be possible for some people to, like, actually genuinely, like, graduate a little. You know, you know what I mean? Like, to, I, to I, say. Yeah, I think you could advance your taste. I mean, it's sort of similar to, like, drinking. Like, when I'm in college. Oh, that's a good point. I'm drinking, like, Keystone Lights and, like, the nastiest shit out there because it's cheap and it's convenient and it's right in my face. Yeah. But as I get older, I'm like, all right, there's more advanced shit out here. There's some wine. There's some champagne. And you have more options because you know a little bit more now. So, like, you tend to, like, you know, think about different genres or you go to a different country and you hear some Italian classical music and you're like, okay, I could, I could appreciate this. But I also saw this recently with you sort of adapt or try to maybe fit in with your friends or some shit. So there was a dude from my gym and, like, he was, I don't know, he's like, he's got to be 40-something. And he was, like, into the old school, like, you know, like, so we got a friend Vinny, and like his parent, we always make fun. His parents were dancing to that old school, like, like uh, baby making music, like Stevie B, and like all that weird, like uh, our friend 80s Vinny, shit. who we know, or the or yeah, Vinny Caniello. Uh, oh, you, <laughs> you just put him on blast hard. Hey, <laughs> we got like care. a trillion people listening to the show, but you can be like, oh, Vinny, you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if you were talking about a new Vinny or old Vinny. Um, no, no. So, so what so, were you saying? So like, so people adapt. So they were like, they're friends. Mm -hmm. So this guy was like, he was all into that 80s music. And now, you know, he got introduced to a, con a country music. So everybody liked country. So now he likes country. And he's just changing and, and changing and changing. And he's changing and changing and changing. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't, I don't believe that guy. Like, I don't think he actually likes each one of those things. It's like, I don't know if you saw the Key and Peele sketch. There was a recent one where 
<laughs> one of them would they were pretending to be like in high school or whatever and one of the uh, somebody would give an opinion and said you know i don't really buy into whatever some theory about some star wars movie or something mm-hmm. and one of the guys would look at the other friends and be like anyway <laughs> and he would look at and then he would say something else and then the guy would be like right and then like trying to dead him on his shit you're right and the guy snapped and he's like you know what I don't think you have a genuine opinion about anything. Tell me one opinion. Tell me one opinion. Tell me one opinion. And he pushes him and pushes him and pushes him and pushes him on it. And then mm-hmm. eventually the guy's like, ah, I don't have any real opinions. I just say stuff to fit in. <laughs> and then he starts running <laughs> away crying. And that's what I feel like. I feel like a lot, of, a lot of people do that. You know, it's like. Well, there's two types of, there's, I think there's two types of people when, when it comes to music and types to other shit. It's like, are you going to, you know, like a certain type of music because you actually have some background to liking the music like you've been to a different country and have heard some shit or been to an opera show or are all your boys just listening to 50 cent and you're like oh that shit is dope yeah but meanwhile you're like oh, i fucking hate rap music i hate black paypal <laughs> <laughs> um it's kind of like smoking cigarettes too when i smoke cigarettes like it's almost like i knew the whole time that like i was doing it and i started doing it because i wanted to fit in you know, mm-hmm. it was, like, the cool thing to do, so I did it, and I was like, yeah, I'm doing it, like, I'm smoking, but, like, at a certain point, you're like, wait, <laughs> what the fuck, what? and it's totally based on, like, like, social cues, I think that's totally true, because as soon as I was removed from an environment where it was, like, the normal thing to do, all of a sudden, I was like, yeah, quitting is not really even hard now, because it's, like, the sh- the social triggers are such a big part of it, and, like, the routine is such a big part of it, and like there's a there's a culture around it and once you remove yourself from that like i've told the story before of how i was able to quit but like i smoke i don't even know how many years 5 6 something like that and then i went to i switched to the e-cigarette and not even switching to the e-cigarette like thinking i'm now going to use this to quit the old cigarettes but i just smoked the e-cigarette like kind of with the the old cigarettes for a little bit and then mm-hmm. i stopped smoking the old ones and kept smoking the e one and again, I wasn't smoking the E1 thinking, like, I'm going to use this for a while and then quit. I was just smoking it because I was smoking it. I didn't even plan on stop uh, stopping, you know, using it. But then after a while, I got too lazy to keep going to the store and get the e-cigarette. So I was down to nothing. And since I was down to nothing and I wasn't in an environment like I was in college or high school where, like, smoking was a thing, it became, like, it was, like, it's rel- it was relatively easy to, like, quit and stay off of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, so much of it, so much of what we believe and what we do, it's just so contingent upon, like, well, what kind of a culture are you in? What kind of a society are you in? What the fuck is everybody else doing and all that stuff? Yeah. No, you're right. A lot of shit is routine. I wake up every morning and it's, like, instantaneously I go to my phone and it's, like, Instagram. You know, like, yeah, and it's just, yeah, like, yeah. do that shit every day that, like, I got to just wake up and not do that shit. And eventually it's, like, you slowly start to pull back. Like, yeah, but I that's mean- any addiction. Yeah, but it's like some things though, like some things it's just, it's annoying to look at from the outside because it's like, well, that's not fake. That person is just doing it to do it at this point, like what we were talking about with music. But uh-huh. other things, it's like, as long as it started based on something that made sense, then I'm, I'm totally for it. Like you enjoy Instagram, so you started uh-huh. doing it with Instagram and it's not like it's, there's no big downsides to it. You're just doing it. You know what I mean? So I'm actually that's kind true. of, I'm, I'm not like against that kind of scheduled you know, routine mentality, but it's just, you always want it to start with something that makes sense. So like, you always want it to start with like, like working out, for example, like, oh, I go to the gym on this day, this day, this day, and I don't break that and I do it and it's a good thing to do. And then you just stick with it. And like eight months in, you might not even remember why you started or how it unfolded, but it's a positive thing. So it's like, okay, you know what? This works, but it only becomes annoying when it comes to like pop culture stuff you know, or just bad habits like smoking mm-hmm. or what kind of music you like. You know what I mean? Like there's different levels of it and different gradations of it. And I'm actually in favor of it if you're doing things that are, you know, that, that you actually enjoy. Like I wish I had the time where I could like one day a week at the same time, you know, I go and I hit golf balls. Or, you know, if I had, I wish we had a, a card game that was a regular card game. You know what I mean? Like stuff like yeah. that. I'd start it and it would become routine, but it's a positive routine. So I'm not, I, I wouldn't judge that as negatively as somebody who's just, you know, going through the motions to try to fit in to do something. Yeah, no, I agree. So, um, speaking of, you, you mentioned rap briefly before, mm-hmm. um, Tyler, the creator who I, yeah. admit, I honestly don't, don't know much about. You probably know much about more about him than I do. 
I know very little. I know one thing about him. Yeah, I've heard his name like a trillion times, but I don't know Dickie McGee's ex about <laughs> Um He was banned from doing shows in, in the UK because of his lyrics. <laughs> right? What? I know. That's a, I, first of all, I love your reaction. It's a classic <laughs> American reaction, and my reaction yeah. was the same. And, like, so th- that – I can't tell you how much that pisses me off because it's like, and, and they hid it behind like, you know, good intentions. Like, oh, well, he had lyrics that were misogynistic and uh, that's not good for society and culture. So we, we don't, we don't want him here. You know, it was one of those arguments. Yeah. And as I was reading, I was like, no, you, no, you, you've gone. There is such a thing as like too liberal. We spoke about this the last time we did a podcast, but like liberal to the point of you're an authoritarian liberal where like, you want to force ideas. You, you want to censor ideas that you think are just ideas that make people feel uncomfortable. So it's like, oh, there were some rap lyrics that were, you know, misogynistic or whatever. Therefore, ban it. Come on, man. Like, think about it. if they had to ban, like, movies or music across the board and, like, stop things that just had some negative shit in there. Virtually every movie ever has murder. Mm-hmm. Right, like every Rambo. Well, gone. there's like a, yeah, there's like a, a conflict in every movie. That's the whole point of a movie is like good, 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 good. Something wrong's gonna happen, and then like maybe good again. But if yeah. every movie was just like good, 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 you'd yeah. be like this movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like where's the drama? When does something happen? <laughs> if we just remove the drama out of everything, I know it would, it would be useless. People got mad at a while ago. I think it was in the the HBO show Girls. Mm-hmm. People got mad at a rape scene in there, and you know they were like, like it, the the honestly the argument was like rape is bad, like who's gonna disagree with that? Of course rape is bad, but it wasn't yeah. real. It was in a show or it was in a movie. I mean, think and about it. And for some people, like like uh like a girl who's living in Brooklyn or some shit, for them to understand certain situations, they gotta see it in maybe a girl's or read it in some book or like hear it in a rap verse or some shit. Yeah, it's just not it. It's not real life. It's a show, and shows depict reality. Like, there have been Mm -hmm. mass murderers in history and terrible criminals who were, like, serial rapists, you know, or, like, Mm -hmm. you know, pedophiles or something. Are you not allowed to make a a movie involving, like, a real-life character like that because rape is offensive? But we just spoke about how, you know, Rambo's got murder in it nonstop. Mm-hmm. R- rape and murder are equally offensive, but what? We're not going to get angry about murder, but we're going to get mad about the rape. There's just there's no consistency, which is why I say I'm I'm such a uh, I'm just totally on the side of free expression in every way. So like, yeah. look, I don't care what's in your movie, I don't care what's on your show, I don't care what's in your song. It could be the most grotesque, disgusting, horrific. Remember this song? Not that this is anything like rape or anything like that, but the um. <laughs> the the Kaya song my neck my back like, oh that was a, that was a classic <laughs> and this is a fucking classic and the whole uh, all you ladies pop your pussy like this <laughs> talking about getting her ass eaten and shit like some yep. it, it doesn't Nicki Minaj have a song isn't the the song like eat cake or whatever about that too the, like yeah it's, it's probably just part of fucking that. entertainment you know like entertainment she, can she's be probably allowed anything. to perform in the UK with that song <laughs> I that's actually that's a great thing I don't know if that's true. I mean, like, I, where do they draw the line? I mean, like, what, that's like, what I'm saying, and it's so subjective. There is no line to be drawn. You have to like, you have to be a hypocrite. You have to pick and choose. And mm-hmm. why not just not be a hypocrite and say, you know what, <laughs> to each their own. If you want to, you know, do whatever kind of lyrics. Think about. Or if you want to go to his concert, you go to it. If you don't want to go to it, don't go to exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, you don't like it? Great. Don't go to the fucking concert. What the fuck's the problem? <laughs> I, like, what are you trying to say? Well, this isn't good for our country. What? The, what does that even mean? You know, there yeah. it's an he's an entertainer. There are people who are, you know, in politics, involved in politics in the UK, who, in my opinion, are way worse characters than any rapper with any lyrics. Mm-hmm. Like, remember Mob Deep shook ones? Like, yeah. It's fucking just rapping about murder and shit. Like, the if you the had whole to, NWA shit. Exactly. I mean, like the whole Straight Outta Compton movie is based on of like that they're like living in the hood and fucking bitches all this stuff exactly you have to if you sit down and like read the lyrics of anything or comedy too same thing i've been strong on the side of like you can't fucking get mad at people almost almost at all for comedy it's like even if it's a joke that's like in bad taste and it was delivered poorly and the person is kind of a dick you still gotta let it go because it's like 
you can't take it as a you know like a, a serious policy comment you don't know if the person is being honest about it again it's a form of entertainment mm -hmm. so and look i'm i'm guilty of it too like it sounds terrible to say but like you know i've made i've made a uh, a pedophile joke before the other day mm -hmm. me and my friend we both watch golf he was uh texting me about something and i forget but i mentioned how what there's this one golfer who just looks like a pedophile like he just <laughs> he, you just get the aura from him mm -hmm. and like i mentioned it and i was like giggling it as i'm typing it out and it was just funny like it, it, there are times when <laughs> you it, it's when things are almost they're so inappropriate and it's so not serious it's that okay it's to funny. laugh at exactly yeah. so it's almost like by getting outraged about anything in comedy, what you're doing is you're taking away a key tool that comics have, which is like the shock and awe aspect. Like mm -hmm. the whole purpose of comedy is, it, you know, you take everybody down this road and then you make a left when you're supposed to make a right. And it's like, that's the punchline. You're like, oh, oh, I get it. That's good. If you say, if you start to look at it like, you know, this is a president giving a speech trying to set policy, you're going to destroy all of comedy. It just, it doesn't yeah. make sense to, to go down that road. Yeah. I was telling Corin before uh, we came on air here, guys, that since he uh, shaved his face, you really do look like eight years younger. It's crazy. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. I, got I, don't, ideas I don't even yesterday. know if I meant that as a compliment, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know how old I am, man. Age is so Dude, I've stupid. forgotten this year. Like, I, there yeah. were times when people asked me, and I, I was like, um, <laughs> you gotta think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were a couple times. I'm 27, but I said I think I said 28 a few times. Yeah, I might have done that. Gave myself a year or something too. Yeah, and it's not like. And then when I corrected in my mind, or I realized later, it's like I don't go. Oh fuck! I go. Eh, close enough. <laughs> like like I'm at that point where it's like okay, one year. Or it's like who who even cares? Yeah, who gives a shit? All right, so now. I want to talk about something that really pisses me off, and I didn't even realize it pissed me off until I saw an uh, article this week about it. Mm -hmm. There was a woman who gave birth in a car on the way to the hospital. Okay. And it, the, I think the cops, like, had to deliver the baby. They pulled her over, and then I think the cops had to deliver the baby. So well, she got pulled over for something, and then, like... Yeah, like, the husband was driving or whatever. I, I might be fucking up the facts of this story so people can double-check me. Mm -hmm. But... The thing that pissed me off is what the fuck ever happened to doctors house calls? You know how doctors back in the yeah. day they used to come to your house mm -hmm. and they used to like they would show like you're sick, your ass is sick, so you're laid up in bed, you're vomiting, you're in pain, you're you got all these problems. People are like serving you soup and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck <laughs> of all the people who shouldn't have to leave the house under any circumstance, isn't that number one on the list? Like, you're sick. You could fucking, who knows, you might have some sort of in infection that can spread or some disease, yeah. you know, some bacterial problem that could g get out there or whatnot. Why did doctors' house calls ever go away? And shouldn't they be brought back fucking immediately? If I'm not mistaken, I think there's some places in Europe that still do it. But, like, I have you ever heard of anybody you know getting a doctor's house call where a doctor comes to the house? No, and you know, I'm trying to think to even like celebrities, like like or Kardashian shit, who would have the top notch everything. I don't, I can't think of it. And there's so many different like things now that offer like deliver to home, like you can get your groceries to home, or exactly. just like getting food delivered to your house, or like just random people worse than a doctor coming to your house, like exactly. a random Domino's delivery guy standing at your front door, who's making no money, who could come into your house and kill you as opposed to a doctor coming in your house you're right like, why, why aren't there doctors in people's houses i would trade this i'm gonna make a radical statement right now i would trade i would trade pizza delivery people for for doctor house calls i would i would do it i would do it right now i'd make that trade Wait, right so, now so you're saying that would stop all pizza like we're delivery just, in general yes we're just <laughs> you, like we're used to the fact that we, you can order a pizza like we're so used to it because we've been doing it our whole lives it's just a normal ass thing but do you think it's because like maybe doctors put themselves on such a pedestal that it's just like no I you can't just call me it. i'm gonna come to your house yeah i think like, exactly i think like now like that's part of it like as somewhere along the line everybody realized like oh shit these dudes can save our lives <laughs> Like, if we need help, they better be there. Like, so we yeah. get accounts out of them 100%. But, like, it, they're so necessary, they're so needed, and it's so important 
that, you know, that's one of those things where when you're sick, it really should be the the red carpet rolled out to help you. I'm one of those people who, when you're sick, uh, well, yeah. I know how I get when I'm sick, and, like, I become a little baby. Like, I'm like a fetus, basically. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking cry. I'm like, oh, save oh, life. I hate my life. So, like, I need to be taken care of. So, mm-hmm. I don't, the thought of, like, you know, having to get into the car, go to the place, sit in the waiting room, put, give them your insurance card, they pay, do this, do that. It's like, oh, fuck you. Just come well, here, Well, just man. to have such a, a close timer on something so important in your life is sort of weird. Like, we should live in an age now where, like, there should be some technology or more, like, studies or more something on pregnancy where it's like you know sort of closer to when you're going to give birth where it shouldn't be, like, Okay, you might have your baby driving to the hospital. Like if mm-hmm. like there's so much technology out there that you should know, all right, all right I'm going to give birth on so a Wednesday. So you're saying have some sort of like some sort of thing that you can get like to the minute that you're going to give birth or to the hour where you know yeah, like, like well, I mean, I don't through. know how pregnancies work or how you nine know, months. women's <laughs> 9 months is, is Yeah, I know. Done, I'm <laughs> saying like you have Yeah, like obviously it takes time, but like there should be something more specific to when you're going to have your baby, you know, like Besides yeah, the C-section. I, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, actually, you just brought up an interesting point because I was I was thinking about this the other day. If I was a woman and I was pregnant, I would want the C-section over the natural really? birth. Fuck yeah! I don't want to squeeze a baby out of my vagina. I know. That it, hey. vaginas are. I mean, the, even the wider ones are not that wide. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're not. It, it's. But I then you're getting like sliced open like a like a freaking turkey and like they're cutting your stomach that's dude. true but that i mean but think about it man like surgery is surgery right like i've gotten my wisdom teeth pull up by the way there's no comparison between pregnancy and wisdom teeth but <laughs> i'm saying like i know people who've been awake for that and they were like oh my god it was the worst thing ever they're like hacking away at your mouth i was put under so i woke mm-hmm. up and i'm like oh rock and roll i feel great now i don't know exactly how it works with c-sections but wouldn't aren't you al- allowed if you want to during a c-section to like whatever i know they could give you epidural or something like that but can't they go further too can't they say like okay we'll put you under and fucking take the baby out or is that not okay because the baby's inside of you and they don't want the baby to get drugs i don't know that's yeah i don't know yeah i don't don't know the details of it but i do know that i would prefer whatever is least painful and i think a natural childbirth would be more painful right oh 100 percent would be more ah that's a good polling question like i mean (laughs) <laughs> well, we could actually just ask women who've had both, and like, yeah, I actually, I think my sisters had both. Oh, and, really? And but but she said she liked the natural birth more. But I, I would go natural birth. I just wouldn't. Yeah, I just wouldn't want to be cut open. Like I, I would withstand the pain. I feel like. Oh fuck that! You can carve me up like a pumpkin. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. As long as I don't have to feel the pain. A, a human being coming, coming out, out of it. You. I know. I know. Think about how weird of a concept that is. Like, have you ever stopped and thought about birth? And then I also find it weird that, like, you know how, you know, it's almost like men have been more in control of societies throughout history. And, like, they've kind of had, come on, let's be honest, they've kind of had more of, like, this superiority complex all along. You know what I mean? Like, this Mm -hmm. misogyny is a very, very common thing in different cultures. And it's like... Wouldn't you think that, okay, yeah, you dropped the seed off, yada, yada, you know, your sperm is part of the picture, of course, but, like, (laughs) women have the baby develop inside of them, a human being develop inside of them, and then they give birth to it. Like, if anything, wouldn't it make more sense for the woman to have the superiority complex and to say, like, bitch, you you do realize none of this is possible without me. I'm the one who fucking has the thing come out of my thing. Now, again, yeah. I get it. You need men, too, obviously. They're part. You need both. You need both, clearly. Mm-hmm. But the fact that the, the, the fetus develops inside of the woman... Like, all we do is fucking squirt that's like shit. A, like, that's a, is a yeah. squirt, squirt, is, we're, we're, we're the equivalent of a fucking biological super soaker. Like, that's, like, that's, a, that, that seems less <laughs> fucking intricate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they have a crazy superpower that we don't have, like, they can form a baby in their stomach. <laughs> <laughs> like, and okay, you want to have a fight? All right, fuck you, now I'm going to develop a second person to come out and fuck you up. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's fucking strange, man. All right, so yeah. you're with me on doctor's house calls, I'd imagine, because that just makes the most sense of anything that anybody's ever said in the history of the world, that we need yeah, doctor's house calls. 
a hundred percent just should be doctor health. Well, I mean, like they do pizza it pizza for that. See pizza. I feel like we're too far gone Oof. with pizza because we're so used to it. But like if we were raised and nobody and just you could never order in pizza, like you always had to go to the pizzeria. I don't think it'd be a big deal. I think people would just be like, yeah, that's how it is. Like diners, yeah. like, you know how most diners or a lot of diners don't deliver. Yeah. Like that's just normal. You just think, oh, it's the diner. You got to go to it. Like if we just lived in a, in a culture where it was like, oh, no, for pizza, you got to go get it. Like they don't come to your door. That's fucking weird. Then we'd just be like, oh, okay. But I would prefer the doctor all the time. Like, even for fucking physicals and shit, man. I don't want to go yeah. to your shitty office. I don't want to walk into the doctor's office and you're playing some cheesy-ass music and it smells like a fucking doctor's office and I see Gertrude in the corner who's 87 years old looking like through her away, yeah. box. Somebody's <laughs> talking on their phone to Margaret. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to do all that. And then they somehow every single time make you wait like 23 minutes sitting in the office. Doctor will be right with you and you're waiting mm -hmm. in the waiting room. And then when they put you in the office, when you get in the office, you got to wait. It's not like you get in the yeah. office and the doctor's like, all right, let's see. What this is. No, the doctor's no, it's like, like, sit on that table and the exactly. doctor will be right in. And right or wrong, the doctor will usually come in, say some shit, leave, and then <laughs> be gone for 23 minutes. And then you're like, I, I just saw this motherfucker. What the fuck is happening? Why do yeah. they, like, the whole process is fucked up, man. Like, I, I always get mad when I think people aren't doing the same level of efficiency at their job that I try to do at my job. You know what I mean? Like, and my mm -hmm. job obviously isn't nearly as, I'm not saving lives here. So it's mm -hmm. totally different and it's on a much lower level. But like, when I think of how, how quick I am, okay, I got to read this. I got to read this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Like I'm boom, 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 mm -hmm. where you get the sense with doctors that like, and with a lot of different fields, it's like there's a little bit of a mm -hmm, I'm going to take my time and bitch, you got to wait for me. And it's like, oh, come on, man. Let me just get this over with. Nobody wants to be there. There should be more sense of urgency for something like your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very <laughs> profound statement. <laughs> no, right. but back in the day, I mean, I don't remember this, obviously, but I quickly we had a conversation this weekend about um, circumcisions. And like the moral or moral or whatever they would have, they would Morality. they would come to your house, and like and chop and chop your dick. <laughs> so they would do house <laughs> like just a fucking crime, man. People don't think of that shit in perspective. Like, so I'm circumcised, and I want everybody to do yourself a favor. Go talk to somebody in your family who's pro circumcision. Had you circumcised? Had your brother circumcised? Whatever the case is, go talk to them. Say, hey, what was your reasoning? You know what they'll mm -hmm. tell you? Uh, um, uh, it's what, uh... I don't even... What, what is the reasoning what behind circumcisions? Do. what they like, do. Well, okay, I thought so, it was like a Jewish thing. Uh, no, uh, I'm Catholic. And yeah, no, I... I was raised Catholic, and I got it done, and everybody I know, except for maybe one person, uh, got it done. And so, like, all my Catholic friends had gotten it done. Raised Catholic, of course, I mean. They had gotten it done. And all my Jewish friends had gotten it done. Mm -hmm. um, except maybe there's a handful of people who were not specifically Catholic, but just broader Christian, like Protestant, who didn't get it done. Um, but the idea behind it was it all started with religion. It's, it's religious. So it started with that. And then, see, this is why it, I, I'm really angry about this topic. Because, like, so after the fact, people wanted to rationalize that they're cutting off the tips of baby dicks. So there's these studies that came out which say, you know, hey, you should do it because, you know, when you look at, when you compare circumcised to uncircumcised people in, like, Africa in some places, people have higher STD rates if, uh, if they're uncircumcised. When they're circumcised, it's cleaner. That's the way the argument goes. Oh, it's cleaner. You know, you don't have the cover over the tip of your dick, so you're not going to have, like, whatever, diseases, whatever. Uh, boil up in there or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> but the the reason why that argument it makes no sense is that you could cut off your dick and balls and have like no STDs. <laughs> like you yeah. want if that's the main. Like the, why are you just stopping at the tip? <laughs> exactly. Like is if that's the main argument of like it's uh, it's healthier. You have less STDs. Well, you'd have even fewer STDs if you chop off everything. So chop off everything. And also we know as a matter of fact that eunuchs who are people that do chop off everything. They live longer lives, like 10 years longer on average. So there's actually, it's true that you live longer. But is that a reason to do it? I say fuck no. And especially since it started out with religion, 
it real it, in in all seriousness it really is just like a cultural thing it really is just like a religious and cultural thing where people started doing it and now it's just a matter of brainwashing oh my mm -hmm. grandparents told my parents to do it my parents told me to do it and then they just pass it down and pass it down and pass it down there's and like really like and it's like mass no, psychosis. no meaning to it exactly yeah. it's mass psychosis that's why i said at the beginning here anybody there's a lot of people who are pro-circumcision, so go talk to somebody who's pro-circumcision and ask them. No, seriously, so you made the decision to get the tip of your you know, baby's dick cut off. Tell me your reasoning. Give me a good explanation as to why that made sense to you, because you would think people would want a high burden of proof to do something like that. But go talk to them. Watch what they say. They can't tell you. They'll be like, well, yeah. you know, it's just uh, that's most uh, people do it nowadays, and... The doctor, it's kind of normal procedure. Like, the doctor assumes you want it. Like, they'll tell you all these fucking stupid things. Like, wishy washy shit. Like, a yeah, there's conservative nothing like, with no, no, no here's why you have shit. to do it. I have a really, yeah. really good reason. You got to sit down and listen to this. It's always like, well, blah, 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 blah. Like, you, and that's why. Well, someone asked me, me and I was like, on some no homo shit. <laughs> I was like, just off of, like, pure, like, looks alone. And yes, I've seen an uncircumcised penis. <laughs> Yeah, we all I would just be like, that one looks better than that one. So the, the uncircumcised I want... or the circumcised looks better. Circumcised. Yeah, but I I I agree, but I think that's only because we're used to seeing it. Like it's so common in porn. It's so common in, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, I it guess. Just, I don't know, but then you see it. In the no, it does look like one. the uncircumcised. Does, like, that looks weird. It does look like an anteater snout. You ever seen? An yeah. Anteater? Yeah. <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but there are downs. Like we don't. Like you and I, because we're circumcised, we don't have the same kind of feel apparently with it that uh, uncircumcised people do like when the, i know this is getting like a gross conversation but when yeah. the tip is hidden when the tip is hidden by that extra layer of skin that means that when that part comes out it's actually it's more sensitive whereas somebody like you or me we're walking around all day and you know your dicks in your pants it's hitting the fucking wall yeah. of your jeans and shit <laughs> like you got no sensitivity down there son <laughs> and i'm in the same boat we've been we've been fucking I mean, think about how weird it would be if only, like, if it just started today. Like, if today there's some cult where some guy who's charismatic takes over, and we never heard of circumcision, nobody ever did it, and nobody ever thought of it. But you have this one cult guy who rises to power. He's got, let's say, keep it small numbers. He's got a following of 1,000 people or 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. And then there's a news report that comes out that says that he convinced his followers to take their fucking newborn babies and take a knife and cut off the tips of their dicks. We would all be like, oh my God, that's the most evil shit I've ever heard in my life, ever. Lock that guy up and throw away the keys. But since it's, you know, a societal phenomenon and it's been going on for so long, people just shrug their shoulders, man. They just, and I always find it funny, like, don't get me wrong, female genital mutilation is worse because it hurts way more and they do it when the women are older and stuff. So that's mm -hmm. worse. But like, you do see a lot of people get very angry, rightly, at female genital mutilation, but you bring up circumcision, and they're like, yeah, I'm for it. <laughs> like, what the, what yeah, are you hey. That's like a, a contradiction there. It's like they haven't, they haven't researched it well enough to be able to, to take that stand. Yeah. Do you think the moil or whatever slightly is a little perverted that he got into that field of cutting little baby dicks? Do I think who's perverted? The moil, the guy who cuts the oh, oh. in the Jewish version. No, no, no. Only, moil. only the one, only the one who, only the one who goes through the actual traditional ritual that they only do in the ultra ultra orthodox community, where they cut off the tip of the dick and then suck the tip off. Oh, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I've no, had that's to do not like. Real. That's I, not I swear real. to God, man, I had to do like four or five segments on it on my show because. Like, and there's a fight going on right now between the mayor of New York City and people. It's not, it's not super common. It's only the most ultra, ultra orthodox communities. Like, there are even orthodox communities that are like, yeah, it goes oh. too far. But, like, uh. the ultra, 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 ultra orthodox are like, yeah, no, that's what we do. And then they argue, for you to try to regulate it, you're a bigot. Like, you're discriminating against my religion. Like, no, 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 what you're doing is you're fucking discriminating against a little fucking kid by sucking his little bloody baby dick, you idiot. Yeah, that's crazy. I know. You bring that up. Like, uh, people don't get it. Like, there are so many good arguments that, like, just oh, at face man. value alone make people go, oh, yeah, I, I want to be non-religious. Like, on that yeah. alone, people go, okay, yeah, mm, I'm done. I'm, I'm tapping out. <laughs> no religion for me. That's fucked up, man. Oh, yeah. All right. So, um, let me see here. Oh, okay. I got to bring this up, man. So, by the way, you, 
I think you nailed it. You were joking around, but I think you nailed it. Remember when you were like, "Yeah, Jared Fogle, pedophile," and at the time we didn't know. Like we, it was mm-hmm. only his his buddy who was. Yeah. And so you said that I I tried to pump the brakes just because I didn't want us to accuse him, and then it turns out he was it wasn't true. It mm-hmm. obviously it looks at, right now like it is true. Um, but <laughs> this is gonna totally like kind of unrelated conversation here. But like, have you ever spoken to people? And they hit you with, like, random Subway hatred. Like, oh, fucking Subway. I, I, I don't get that, man. Like, I actually, <laughs> I don't mind those sandwiches. Oh, I, lo- I like Subway sandwiches. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of anything of, like, Blimpy. I fucking hate Blimpy, but I don't, I don't know why. I don't know if I've ever had Blimpy. <laughs> I don't even know if I've ever had it. I don't think it's as big as the East Coast. Subway's just so universal that, like... I guess I don't know why people. Yeah, you're right. People, some people have such hatreds towards Subway that it's like, yo, relax. It's a fucking deli chain, dude. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, that's like I'm bringing it up to you because I'm pretty sure, like, my God, probably ninety percent of people who I've ever had a discussion about uh, Subway with, too, if that sentence makes sense, <laughs> and people I've discussed Subway <laughs> with, they're always like, yeah, fucking Subway, like, ah, oh, gross. You know what I'm saying? I'm always like, actually, no, no, I don't. Like, I actually no, don't like, find their sandwiches in any way. Yeah, no, Subway's banging. But originally, when that whole Jared shit came out, and everybody was like, oh, see, Jared molester, child molester, uh, and then the story was like, you have to read read deeper, and it was like his friend who had the porn or this and that, and it was just like they were just invading his house. Someone was telling me yesterday that. It still could be something like that. Like his friend was the 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 one who had all the child porn on his computer, and Jared knew about it, and like it was on the computer also or something, but didn't want to like rat out his friend. No, I don't think so because I had to do the story too for my show, and uh-huh. reading all the details, it doesn't look good for him. So, like he's he's involved in it all. Like he's looking at child porn also, or it's even more than that he's having sex with underage people oh wow so what happened is so there were a few that are not that were, that honestly weren't a big deal like they were 17 or something like that which is like i i've always argued i think that should be legal like he would pay for sex with a 17 year old and then tell the 17 year old like oh tell your friends and then you know she would do whatever and then he'd say oh the younger the better like you got any 14 oh. you got any 15 and then the real nail in the coffin is he he received in emails from his buddy who ran the charity uh, like videos and pictures of cameras, you know, pictures that were taken in cameras that were in bathrooms at his buddy's house of like six year olds, seven year olds, oh, 12 year olds in the like bathroom showering and getting naked and oh. shit. And then on, on top of that, there was all this other kind of child porn, they say, from, you know, just all in his email, all on his computer, all stuff like that. So I don't know it, all the details, and the article wasn't perfectly yeah. clear about how, how young it is that he did have sex with who were super Damn. young. But he was looking for super young, and the, the pictures alone, like on the pictures, like, again, I was trying to be as clear as I could in my video. I've always said... I think the age of consent for everything should be uh, 16 and up. But, like, once you get into, once you're at, like, 12, I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm tapped out now. You're done. You're a criminal. And then, you yeah. know, they were saying super, super, super young. He it, Allegedly, he said the younger the better to no. somebody. And there's, like, an electronic trail here. And they say that he's probably going to plead guilty. Or he already has pleaded guilty. Or he's going to take a plea deal Yeah, I think he pleaded like guilty or something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, at what point do you sort of have to just start looking at, you know, I don't know, warning signs, but like, you know, I don't know what weight he started at, but like 600 pound, you know, depressed guy goes into a diet and does all these, you know, becomes the face of a ad of promoting how fat he was that you're like, this guy probably isn't getting laid, you know? <laughs> you know, you know what the red flag is? The red flag was actually the charity because the charity all the way back in 2012, the charity kind of lost its charity status because they didn't pay back taxes. Mm-hmm. So, but then when you dig deeper into it, they were supposed to give out like scholarships. They gave out a grand total of zero scholarships. So it turns out basically the entire charity was about Jared 
like going to different schools and giving speeches to kids where he talks about how important it is to stay healthy and exercise and eat right and all this stuff. But you could just see it like in the back of that dude's mind. He's looking around like perusing the crowd like, ooh, who's, you know, who's. Who do, who do I Vulnerable. like? Who am I into? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, like, the charity was the biggest red flag to me. And then I kind of had, I, I, as I said on my show, like, obviously not everybody who works with kids is a fucking pedophile or a molester yeah. or anything like that. I mean, that's obviously the case. But if I, all I'm saying is if I'm a parent, if I'm a parent, and I'm not a parent, I don't plan on being a parent, but if I was a parent, you bet your fucking ass if I see somebody who's really enthusiastic about working with kids, like, and specifically goes into those fields... I'm going to be careful. Like, I would not leave my kid around anybody uh, without being basically 100% sure that I could trust the person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's yeah, no, a hard thing to do. Because I'm no, not- it, and it sucks that it has to be like that. But, like, you start to question, like, why is this guy so interested in, you know, yeah. early childhood field? Or, you know, that's why right. is he so – why does he have this daycare or something? You know, like, that's, weird shit. That's right. And my, my sister, too, uh, you know, was telling me, like, she was like, oh, we're going to leave the kids alone with blah, 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 blah. I was like, who the fuck is that? She's like, oh, you know, it's this person who works at the place and the blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you sure? <laughs> like, I'm just – I always want to be like, how sure are you? And then when she says, like, oh, I'm sure, I always want to say, like, well – that should make you less sure that you're sure because maybe the whole, the whole thing the person is putting on is the facade of being the most normal guy ever so you don't suspect X, Y, and Z. You know what I mean? And I know that puts me Yeah, like, 100%. That puts me in like a slightly paranoid category. But again, I'm just saying if it's my kids, fuck, I, will, I would be paranoid. I'm not letting my fucking kids around. Hell yeah. Well, I mean like I love, I love the sport of wrestling, you know, and I, I think like you got to be tough and gritty. And, you know, when there's like a – like an 80 year old guy coaching like a high school wrestling team who's got no connection to wrestling. You're sort of like, all right, well, well why, hold on. Why, why is he, like this? Why is this it's, guy the wrestling coach? It's the one from family guy, the old guy from family guy. Who's yeah. like, I like these tats. I wear <laughs> some nice tats right now. Yeah. Like shit like that, that you're just like, all right, like this is, this is strange. And this is a red flag. You know, I, I don't want to be the, but usually you're like the weird one. You're like, Hey, Guys, yeah. any, anyone else? going to shout you down. You'll be like, hey, hey, come on now. Have some respect. Like, we, yeah, we don't want to. This guy's. This guy. He's going to staple country. the community forever. Come on. Yeah. You can't question him. It's just like. It's almost like with Joe Paterno and Jerry Sandusky. Yeah. Like, I mean, on. like, you're Jerry, like, this Jerry's guy's. been a... here forever. Don't. You can't question him. He's Jerry. Get your get your act together. What the fuck is wrong? You're fired. Jerry, yeah. you need a promotion. <laughs> Here's a kid to carry around your bags for you. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> And it's like you don't want to be the oddball and raise the fucking question. Yeah. And like people are like, that guy's weird. While this guy continues to do some weird shit. <laughs> yeah. Now now I'm I'm gonna be a little bit of a dick here, but I, I have to bring it up because it annoyed me. Um mm-hmm. so so there's this really, really sad story of this uh professional golfer whose dad recently died. He was I think about seventy years old, seventy one years old or something. He was driving on a highway in Texas, he got into an accident and he died. Mm-hmm. And so his son he died like two weeks ago or something like that. His son played in the tournament this week, and he said, like, I know my dad would want me to play in the tournament. Last thing he would want me to do is not play. Mm-hmm. And so after after one of the rounds, after yesterday's round, um, he did like an after, you know, a little interview or whatever and answered some questions. Like they usually do a quick, like, whatever, minute-long interview that they yeah. do uh, after their round if they're in contention. Mm-hmm. And... Like, first of all, the interviewer brought it up, which I was already like, ooh. Yeah. Like, I no, there's no, come on, there's not. I mean, we get it. He's in a lot of pain. But if anything, that would lead me in the direction of I'm not going to air out your personal shit on national TV. Like, it, you know, or if, or if anything, it's just real quick, sorry for your loss, and then you move along. But, like, he mm-hmm. said something along, the, the host said something, you know, along the lines of, well, you know, he's probably, he's been out there with you on the course this entire time so far. And then the guy... Uh, was like, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you for that. And he's like, you know, hopefully, hopefully he'll he'll be looking down yeah. on me tomorrow, which you know is today, which is Sunday when, you know, you that's when the, the last day of the tournament, so you got to try to win that day. Yeah. And like, I'm listening to it, and on the one hand, obviously, socially speaking, it, you have to be. Like, somebody like me, I've already lost that battle. Like, people are going to say shit like that, and it is what it is. I can't be the guy to say, hey, that's not that's not technically true. Like, I can't say that because that's that's fucked up. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like, 
there's something about that that I think is actually really wrong. Like, that's kind of fucked up. Like, don't, don't say some, like, don't say some shit. First of all, you don't know if this dude is religious. You don't know if he's not religious. You don't know any of that shit. You're interviewing him and you're going to say, oh, he's, he's been with you this whole time. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, that's not true, number one. I know you think you're helping, but you might not be helping. He might be somebody like me and he's looking at you like, Number one, you shouldn't be talking about this issue. Number two, why like, exactly. why are you making statements like that? Number three, and this is the most important thing, I'm not comfortable with social norms that are just so, so obviously made up. <laughs> and that's so obviously made up. Like, it's true that when an atheist or an agnostic stands at the side of a coffin and they have to console their friend who lost a loved one, we don't have as much to say. Like, I can't, I, there's no, I can't say, like, well... I'm, pr I'm praying for you. Yeah, like, well, you know, you're, you'll, he's in a better place. You'll see him in a better place. Like, I, that, I can't say that. So I don't have as much to mm -hmm. say, but there's also this aspect of, if anybody else does say that, you know that they don't know whether or not that's true, and you know, if anything, it's likely false. You know they're making it up. So they're admitting, like, I'm going to say something to you, purely for emotional comfort when my whole thing would be like dude you can you can get emotional comfort not based on fake shit we can d do some real shit to get you emotional comfort you know what i mean and yeah. i know I, look i i know like i said i know that in the long run i lose this battle with society because i already lost this battle that's just some shit people say oh he's with you you know uh, or like well just like the main one is just like you know your father's smiling down on you today or something like like yeah well, uh, he's well, he's not in the sky like smiling down on me like he maybe <laughs> i just want to change the i just want to change the norm to make it so that you know instead of saying some stuff like that i don't know somebody puts their arm around somebody they're like hey man uh, yeah i know i know it's terrible i know nobody can relate to your specific pain right now a lot of people have lost a loved one though and just remember, you have family and friends here now that are here for you. You want to go grab a beer? Let's go grab a beer. You want to go talk about the good times? Let's go talk about the good times. You want to go watch a movie? Let's go watch a movie. You want to go to the massage parlor and get jerked off? Let's go to the massage parlor and get jerked off. Like, <laughs> like there's shit that exists in the world that you that is actually a comfort. And again, it might only slightly take the edge off of the pain, but that's okay because pain is a process, man. You know. I've, I've mm -hmm. lost my father when I was young, so if anybody knows about this shit, I know about this shit. It's one of those things where time eventually heals all wounds. So somebody might yeah. be in a terrible state right then and there, but that may be the thing that they need right then and there to then move forward and get by it and be all right. But I'm not on this page of, you know, for religious reasons and for social reasons that it should just be so normal for people to be like, oh, he's looking down on you. Oh, my God, he's with you. You don't understand. He's right there, God damn it. Like, stop fucking making shit up, man. It's like, just... your father would have been very proud of you that you said that. Like, no, maybe he, maybe he wouldn't have been. Exactly. <laughs> like... exactly. No, if, if, usually if the dad was still alive, like, he wouldn't have treated that day like any special day. He'd be a normal exactly. as day. He probably's not going to call your ass. He's sitting at home eating a TV dinner, watching fucking reruns of MASH. <laughs> Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can, I, you know what it is? This is what it is. I just thought of it now. I don't like it when adults just give in and kind of admit, like, in this one area, we're giving ourselves permission to think like children. You know what I mean? Like, you never want to, you don't want to ruin holidays for kids. Like, when I was younger, the thing was, oh, you know, they didn't want to let us know. Like, oh, Santa Claus isn't real, you know? So mm -hmm. that's like a child's, like, they want, okay, let him be innocent. To let him have his childhood. Like, at a certain point, you're an adult, son, and some real shit happened. It's not, uh, we're not playing the Santa Claus game now. Oh, you're going to see him and have tea and crumpets with him. Like, no, be an adult here. It's going to suck. You're going to go through some pain. Pain is a growing process, though. There's some real shit in this world. We can comfort you in a real way, and let's you know have a conversation like adults here. But they don't. I think a, a lot of people run and hide. I think Sorry, for, what I no, I think for a lot of people, it's their only way also of like knowing how to. That's their only way of knowing how to console someone or making someone feel better. You know, like yeah, when you see a baby, you know, like if someone shows me a baby, my first thing is gonna be like, oh, that baby's so cute. Yeah. Whereas right. like. I could look at that baby and be like, it's not, it's not a cute baby. <laughs> but like, just, it's just like, it's when someone passes away, you're supposed to tell them, you know, everything's going to be all right. Your yeah. father's looking down on you and you know, he's, he's happy that you're 
oh, coping with the loss. Similar to when you see a baby, you got to say it's cute. Or, you know, when a, a girl's getting married, you got to say she looks beautiful on her wedding day. <laughs> like, you know, like there's certain there's certain shit that like is just rule book. You got to say it. I mean, whether or not it's like religious, it shouldn't be like, like that way. I mean, we should live in a world where we kept it real. Like, I'm, yeah. if I'm at a wedding and she looks hideous on her wedding day. She'd be like, you don't look your best today, girl, but you're getting married. <laughs> People. <laughs> you know? People lose a sense of, like, I'm one of those people who, because of the way we go about with traditions today, I'm basically anti-tradition. But yeah. the whole idea of having traditions, in my mind, is, like I was kind of alluding to earlier with schedules, like, if the thing initially made sense and you liked it, then I'm for that thing becoming a tradition. You know, like, if the, let's say, hypothetically, we decided, hey, every... September of every year you and me are going to take a trip and play a new golf course every single year like that's a tradition I can enjoy because the whole idea of it was something that made sense from day one something mm -hmm. that you know we would enjoy we would have fun with we have some beers do all this stuff so that all makes sense to me but traditions that are just like they're there from before you were even born and you didn't even fucking sign up for it but you're expected to participate that's where I go ho 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 fuck you like, mm -hmm. a Vegas trip every year is a tradition I would be in favor of. But am I in favor of a tradition where we, you know, all of us have to buy each other four presents one day every single year and pretend like we like each other over a dinner that has to be the same thing every single time we have it on Christmas or where we pretend like there's a bunny that hops around all over the place and delivers <laughs> presents to people? Like, I didn't sign up for that. I didn't agree with that. The roots of that are, it's a mix, but it's a mix of religion, Christianity, paganism is actually part of it. Like, oh, I didn't sign up for that one. I didn't agree with that one, but I'm just expected to participate in it when it's not, it's not something that I want to do. I want to do the traditions that we can sit down, logically make up, and then we can abide by it. And then we all get it and we're all on the side of it. But when you just like, I mean, think about the way it looks around when it's Christmas, man. Everybody's got the fucking Christmas lights up. Everybody's got the decorations. Everybody's got the things on their front lawn. You go to any store, they're always playing Christmas music. And I know everybody's, a lot of people like it. Cool, cool. If you like it, I'm not judging you or anything. But the thing that annoys me is how widespread certain traditions become when, again, none of you guys initially signed up for it. You were just born into it. It's Again, it's a different thing if you set up your own tradition and you... You're doing it for reasons that you can easily explain and describe, and it was your idea that you birthed. I don't like this. I guess I'm just, in essence, against the herd mentality of, like, we're just going to do what we're going to do because we're going to do it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I said this. I think I've said this before on the show. Like, um, I've got a friend who keeps kosher, and there's a lot of people I know that keep kosher, and I've, you know, I've asked them, like, hey, why do you keep kosher? And they've got no reason for it, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're just like... Oh, I don't know. It's just part of the Jewish religion. We right. keep kosher, and I'm like, okay, you, you're an idiot. And then like, <laughs> I have a friend who keeps kosher, and I asked him, and like, he had a whole like explanation for it. You know, he was mm. like, you know, well, my grandfather kept kosher dur during the Holocaust because Ooh, this. And he that. played yeah, the like, Holocaust card on you, dog. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, no, like he dropped, like he dropped knowledge, and like there was a reason why you can't mix like meat and you know, like dairy and this and that, like. He broke it down and he was like, you know, if he could have, if he withstood doing that for this long, then, you know, then I can do it or something like that. And I was like, fuck, man, keep kosher. Yeah, but that's, like, that's a brother, better reason than the other guys for sure. Yeah, but when someone doesn't have any backing to it and they're yeah. just like, I just doing it because my dad did it and, you know, my dad did it because my grandfather, then it's yeah. just like, you're just like, you don't even know what it's for. It could have been for, you know, like your dad had a bet that he had to suck this dude's dick. <laughs> And if he loses, he's got to, like, do this for the rest of his life. And then his father learned that shit. And now this, like, and then it's going to be fourth generation. Like, Dad, why are you doing this? I had and to it suck this guy's dick, son. He's still, like, your great-grandfather sucking some guy's dick because he lost a bet. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. All right, so I got a few more things here I want to talk about real quick. Um, first of all, let me just re respond to I've gotten a couple of in the past few days because there was, like, a – so there was a shooting. I had to report on the shooting. Oh. And I had to put, like, gun in the title or whatever. And mm -hmm. apparent, like, I want to explain to people the way YouTube advertising works so they know. Because I've gotten tweets where they're like, oh, my God, the NRA is 
is advertising on your fucking web page and somebody was like do something about this like somebody was actually legit angry about it most really? people i think just thought it was ironic other some people were actually legit angry and i just mm. want to explain to them real quick the way youtube advertising works is i've been in contact with a grand total of zero uh advertisers or corporations mm. i don't that's an, i'm in no way shape or form uh I don't do that. That's not what I do. I just do the news. So the way it works is there's this giant buffer between me and the advertisers, the buffer being YouTube and Google. And what happens is corporations or advertising companies go to Google and they buy ad space. And when they buy ad space, they buy it in broad categories. So somebody will go and buy a news and uh, buy X amount of dollars advertising in the news and politics category. And then those ads will run on my channel. So there are going to be times in the upcoming election where you might see, seriously, you might see like a Rick Santorum ad or a Mike Huckabee ad on my channel because the way YouTube advertising works, they don't get specific enough where somebody can buy news and politics and they go and they buy, you know, I want to buy only liberal news and politics or only conservative news and politics. So when the NRA apparently went to YouTube after the shooting or went to Google after the shooting and, bu and bought ads, they bought in the news and politics category, which means that some of the ads are going to run on my channel. Now, there's actually a beautiful irony to this, too, which is, think about it, man. That means that some of the money that I earn is being, <laughs> pe pe my enemies are paying me. <laughs> People who I in no way, shape, or form agree with end up giving me money. And the key important thing here, again, is that there's a buffer. If there wasn't a buffer, I think you people would have to be concerned because they'd have to think, well... Kyle or anybody else on YouTube is probably bought off for reasons X, Y, and Z by the corporations, by the advertisers. But the business model of YouTube makes sense for the content because, like I said, there's a giant buffer. Whereas if you look at CNN, for example, or MSNBC or any of those places, there's really not a buffer. Management works directly with the advertisers. So people at the corporation work directly with the advertisers and then they end up picking who goes on air and they're only going to pick people to go on air who won't rock the boat with their advertisers. Whereas with me, I mean, it's, it's provable that I'm not in agreement with a lot of the people, a lot of the groups, a lot of the companies who run ads in the news and politics category for Google or YouTube and that ends up on my channel. So I just wanted to calm everybody down. Don't worry. I have not... You'll You're not know. selecting those. Yeah, believe me, you'll know if I ever sell out, you will immediately know and there will be mass fleeing from my channel. So hold me accountable all you want because everybody already knows where I stand on the issues and what I do. But don't want and to, bottom line also, stop annoying me with the tweets. Yes, I know NRA run shit. Yes, I know that eventually Rick Santorum was going to run shit. Don't worry, I'm not take it I'm not selling out to them and doing their bidding as they give me money. They're just dumb enough to not know the model and they pay me money. And then I bash them with the money they fucking pay me. So I just wanted to calm everybody down and let them know that. Speaking of that, Rick Santorum was just on Bill Maher. Just saw. Yeah, what the fuck was that about? Like, and Bill Maher weird. said it. He was like, is that how bad you're doing in the, in the polls? Yeah. You come on my show? Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's... He's doing poorly, and that would be the only reason why he goes on that show. I, You know, I'm one of those guys where I don't even know if I'd want to talk to a guy like Rick Santorum. Just like I don't even know if I'd want to talk to Bill O'Reilly. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, I guess I guess possibly because Jon Stewart did that thing with Bill O'Reilly, and, you know, he did a good job, and it was productive and all that stuff. But, like, some people are just so fucking far gone, like Glenn Beck, for example, mm -hmm. that I think, like, there's no he's so far gone and i don't even be, like he doesn't know anything and he's just smug and wrong about everything and arrogant in his wrongness he's not even interested in learning or changing his position so i don't even know if i'd want to fucking talk to him you know like i've tried to talk to people yeah, well who, that's how it was with rick santorum yeah like the yeah they started everything out bill nice. Marseille, say like he would just say something and then he hit him with that like me you me you, yeah. you like whatever he did you remember yeah, and the sad thing is, like, obviously Rick Santorum is dead wrong, and he's not representing mm -hmm. scientists and shit, but that's, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, when you're so far off base in all these different areas, how can you even have a conversation? It's almost like that's just, you're too far apart to have the conversation. It's like taking somebody who speaks Japanese and somebody who, you know, speaks fucking Swahili, and you go, all right, go. It's like, well, we can't really, because we're not even agreeing on a bare minimum set of facts. We don't even agree on... 40% of things or 30% of things. How can we even start a conversation?
But do you think he really believes all the shit that he preaches? Like, because it's like Bill Maher read one of those quotes he said or something like that. And before he even read it, like, Rick Sintorm's face was almost like, yeah, yeah, like embarrassed. Yeah. yeah, like, embarrassed, like, you know, I'm just saying that because I got to say that, you yeah, know, I like. Don't... That's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. It might be that uh, Santorum was reacting like that because he knows the audience he's in front of, so it's like, yeah, maybe. it's almost like a natural defensive reaction where even if he believes it, he has to be like, ha, 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 maybe I worded that wrong just because he doesn't want to feel the negative fucking energy just beaming down on him. But that's yeah. but you're, you're getting at a, a broader question, which is very important and very interesting, which is one I've spoken about before. Where I think it's a mix, man. I think there are some Republican media figures and some Republican politicians who are liars. They're just liars. They're lying to you. They don't even believe what they say, but they're doing it to get their paycheck. And then there are others that are true Kool-Aid drinkers who believe it and who, you know, are dangerous in their own right, too. I mean, both they're either liars or they're they're stupid. It's one one or the other. And. With a guy That's like sad. Sean Hannity, for example, I think I have a conclusion. I think Sean Hannity is a liar. I think, you know, he's one of these guys who he says so many outrageous things. They're so over the top. It's clear that his brain functions better than the points that he's making. <laughs> so I don't believe him. And there's other stories like Olbermann was on Mars show a while back, and he said something like Hannity had mentioned to him at some dinner uh, that, oh, yeah, no, me and Olbermann are friends. We get along. We just do the thing on TV that's different. That's not how we really are, yada, yada. I don't even know if I believe necessarily the story from Olbermann, but I can see Sean Hannity doing something like that. He seems like he's just doing it for the paycheck, and he knows what his job is. Whereas a guy like O'Reilly, on the other hand, I think he's a true Kool-Aid drinker. I think he yeah. believes the shit he's saying. I think that he finds a way to rationalize some bullshit beliefs that he has that are obviously not true. He has some sort of stock arguments he comes up with that he just throws them out. If tie goes in, tie goes out. You can't explain that. There's obviously a design. There must be a designer. Therefore, God exists and Christianity is right. Like, you know, this is the kind of way that he thinks, and I think he's a true Kool-Aid drinker. But you'd have to go, like, case by case between each politician and each yeah. Uh, and actually, to answer your question about Rick Santorum, now that I think about it more, because I've thought about this a while back, I kind of believe him in his craziness, believe it or not. Really? Like, yeah, there's some people who are just like Ted Cruz. I, I'm not sure I believe he might be an, a, a liar and he might just be a narcissist and he wants more power and he's playing that card of I'm the right winger. Whereas Rick Santorum, I mean, he obviously is a sellout, too, and he's a corporate whore, too. But, I mean, the way he talks about fucking abortion and shit when he gets into it, it's like he's almost like like he has – there's some passion there. It's not, like, contrived. With Ted Cruz, it's kind of contrived. He's like, I'm going to get angry about this and do the politician <laughs> hand motion. Me. But Rick Santorum is actually like, we're killing babies. Yeah, like riled up about it. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I got – um. One more thing here I wanted to bring up. I'm going through my yeah. list and my notes in my phone. Oh, I, the study on e-cigarettes, going all the way full circle here back to cigarettes. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a study that came out on e-cigarettes that I covered. They're 95% less dangerous than regular cigarettes. Wow, 95%. Yeah, and that came out from uh, the reason why I believed it and the reason why I covered it is that it was a study done by the British government. So, in other words, it's not like a study done funded by the tobacco companies about how e-cigarettes are really bad and you should stick with tobacco. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there were like contradictory studies, I think, that I've covered in the past that were, you know, one was like, oh, they're horrible. Another one was like, oh, they're fine. This one I actually believe because of, you know, the funding is government funding. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it, man. This may sound ridiculous, but I know they, they sell ones that are not... Um, that are not don't even have nicotine in it. Now, nicotine isn't a carcinogen, and that's not really the bad part of cigarettes. The bad part is the tar and the tobacco and the chemicals and all that stuff. But I might just, for the fuck of it, like have uh, one of the ones with no nicotine and just and get the the different flavored ones and just fuck around with them. Is that so crazy? Now, is, to think is that? an e-cigarette is that the same thing as a, a vaporizer? That's or right. Are those two different va things. Yeah, they, like they call it when you smoke an e-cigarette, they call it vaping. Like, oh, he's vaping. Have you ever I, done it or no? I, no, I've never done it. I, I had a, I had a pull of a cigarette once. I remember at, at the New Rochelle High School around the circle. I think I was with you and Vinny. And I was just like, yeah, this isn't for me. And I, I, I don't have no, I have no interest in even doing it. Like, because it's it just, it's just sparking. Like you're just, you're, you're starting the fire, even if it's not there. You know, like. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, it, it, dude, I. I don't know if I ever told you, but like my whole thing when I started smoking, 
I didn't even enjoy it. My first, like, two packs, I didn't enjoy. You don't enjoy your first X amount. I didn't. I don't know. Other people can tell me what they've experienced. But, like, my first two packs, I did not enjoy. Mm -hmm. I was just doing it to do it and doing it to be cool. And, I mean, obviously, my dad had smoked his entire life. So, it was, it was also one of these things where you're a kid. You see your dad doing it. You're like, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I, I did it. The first two packs, there wasn't anything Nothing. there, dog. It was just like, But I oh. just, I don't see... I don't see any I mean like what what would you get out of it? Like what's the well, what's it, your get out of it? What's your return on investment? After a while it becomes like we were talking about before. So it's a social thing. There are social triggers to it. And it also becomes there is something to the idea that it's also like a quick uh stress relief. Like it's a quick there's something to it where it gives you whether it's a little but bit of a But there's so many down. other better stress like you can like get a boxing punching bag and like at least that works on your fitness or something like that like well, there's, well you can't really do that like right when you exit class in high school like that was the whole thing that's it was, true. there's like a ritual to it and you can't do it you can another. punch somebody <laughs> <laughs> another time you do it is when like when i would drive to school in the morning it's like as you're driving you have it so it's like you're right it, like the point that you're getting at is a hundred percent correct which is it's just dumb. You're just sparking something here that's going to be a problem, and it is insanely dangerous for you. You're honestly probably better off having done, like, heroin once or twice than you are smoking cigarettes because the mortality rate is ridiculous, and you're right. You don't get much out of it. Like, at least with, in all seriousness, at least with, like, other drugs, you get something out of it. Like, if yeah. somebody does heroin, they're going to be like, fuck, I feel good, bitch. But if somebody smokes a cigarette, it's like a little change in, okay, I got either a little more calm or I got a little more energy or I got this little burst of stress relief. But then, you know, you go right back to the baseline. You get yellow teeth or like, yeah. like there's, there's, side, there's bad side effects. Yeah, and it's just like it's. we've also thankfully gotten to the point where that's really not cool anymore. It's just not. Mm -hmm. Like it is more cool to vape now, but as long as vaping is as not bad as they're saying it is, okay, whatever. It's, it's, it's a step in the right direction. But I love there's one counter argument that I really think is bullshit that people use where they say, well, you know, it's not necessarily going to help people quit. What it's going to do is it's going to allow even younger kids to smoke the vape things first. So what if they're not really all that dangerous? Who gives a fuck? And it's not. Yeah, I mean, we had the candy them. cigarettes as a kid and like we, yeah. we played around with them and shit like that. I just yeah. I just feel like we're. I mean, I, I don't know how everybody is, but we're sociable enough where we can have a good time without having to do some some oh yeah no you were way smarter than me with avoiding it for sure i mean because again like i said i didn't even enjoy my first two packs so why the fuck would i continue i continued because i was a stubborn little run-of-the-mill normal you know little prick who's like oh i need to fit in i need to be cool i'm gonna oh look at me i'm such a badass like no you're fucking killing yourself and like you were saying there's a million and one things you could have done that were better you know like i started but i mean don't get me there's there's other shit that like we used to play CeeLo in the back of the class and that, you know, that's rolling three dice against the wall. Well, and it's like, that's similar to <laughs> cigarette smoking. It's just like, why yeah. did I pick up that habit? And I didn't pick up cigarette yeah, smoking. Then habit. we get into me and you go back full circle now to the days when we were at the card spot. <laughs> yeah. Like, I we mean, like, why did we, we got into gambling habits? We were like 16 years old at a club with all the fake mafioso guys. <laughs> hey, why little do Timmy's do nuts like, over here. Miss Calabrese. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, they Potter. called you Harry Potter. What do they call me? Did they call me anything or no? Uh, I think you were just you were just Kyle. Like, where's Kyle? I oh, remember like awesome. so they, so they were ripping the on you, but they left me alone. <laughs> yeah, they just kept it real. <laughs> See, that's what the cigarettes got me. They saw I smoked cigarettes at sixteen, and they're like, "Hey, oh, he's he? cool." <laughs> and I wore my little glasses in there, and they were just like, "Hey, Potter." <laughs> hey, Potter. That's right. All right, man. That's all I got. You got anything you wanted to talk about? Well, well, we got a new fan to the show. She wanted a shout out. Fucking Molly listens to the show now. My fiance. That's awesome. What's up, Molly? Like religiously now. So she's like, give me a shout out. So now every time I go in the fucking kitchen or something, she's like, why did you? Why? Why do you think? You know, or like, you don't really think that way about mom. Well, she doesn't even speak like that. She's gonna be so <laughs> mad. <laughs> you're gonna get in trouble. Um, yeah, you're saying she'll bring up stuff from old shows and be like, I can't believe X happened. And you're like, yeah, so her how did you know that? She's like. She's like, so I heard about Corin's Vegas trip when he was 21. I'm like, 
Come on, bro. Like, oh yeah, yeah. You didn't you didn't plan this very well, man. When you agreed to do this, you didn't realize that I was gonna be talking about my dick size. I was gonna be I, yeah, about fucking circumcised penises and, and stuff like that. <laughs> and that's a relatively tame conversation for us. But we got like I I just saw today. Um, the link was open on the computer. The last thing had fifteen thousand views, dude. Like so, I mean, like out of those fifteen thousand people, there's gonna be two people that like. I don't want listening to this shit. <laughs> well, you're now semi-famous, bro. You better watch out. You go out there in the yeah. streets of Chicago. I'm, I'm, I'm popular in the streets of Chicago, man. Yeah, you are. Just fucking that south side is brutal. I'm actually only semi kidding about that because there are some. I know some. There are some people who listen to the show from Chicago. I actually. What up, Chi Town? What up, Chi Town? So but you know, say, dude, I was so fucking. I, I mean, I, like. When I saw that poll of like you right behind the Wall Street Journal on Google's preferred oh, yeah, news yeah, yeah. list, I gotta be honest, man. Th- thank you for tweeting that it's and insane. stuff. It's I don't. It's insane. I I've don't got know, like though. 58 followers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know though, um, what the how they calculated that. You know, like that's the thing. Like you're right. It doesn't ma- even really matter because they put me on the same list as you're on news. a Google like preferred list. Yeah, news, top whatever that. Per- top one percent with. New York Times, Wall Street Journal, all all the you know big ones, CNN yeah. and stuff, and I just don't know like how exactly they they did it because I know TYT who's way bigger than me. They were below me on that list, so that means they didn't just do it by sheer like view count. They, there's yeah. some formula that goes into well, it's a mix of first time viewers where I might have more first time viewers right now than TYT does, and then other people do loyalty of the people who listen like a whole bunch of shit goes into it but yeah either way that's fucking crazy to, to look at that and by the way uh wikipedia what's going on dog I, d- I don't know if you saw me tweeting about this earlier core but no what, what? apparently i've had two or three uh you know listeners to the show at different times create a wikipedia for either me or or the show uh-huh. and every time w- wikipedia deletes it like, what? Really? I exist. I'm not fake. I'm right here. What the problem? What's the problem? There's like Wikipedia pages for fucking anything and everything. Like, why would they delete yeah, your? And you know what? <laughs> Twitter too, kind of. Twitter's a little annoying because they like people. There are people who have gotten the the certified check mark, who have way fewer followers than I do and are way less known than I am. So the check mark is like you. Oh, you're verified. You know, this your. Not that so you're what a is that? Celebrity, yeah. No, I yeah, no, I see the check mark, and I see that it, like next to no, obviously means, bigger like, names. They, it's more recognition, and the less people know, like okay, this is an account where we kind of need to give the check mark for verification because it's a, a it's you know, um, an account that's liable to a little more be prestigious copied. or some shit. No, okay. so that like somebody might you know to fuck with you, like somebody might fuck with whoever Robert De Niro or got it, got Dave it, got Chappelle, it. and hey, here's another account, and it's a fake one so you know you got to let everybody know who the real one is by doing the check mark because it's got a certain it. level of notoriety and i mean we all know this i've i've reached that point a long time ago yeah absolutely. Many of- so you don't you have the check mark or you don't No, i don't have the check mark yet and that's my point is that yeah but, but how do they go about Twitter, getting that shit well there is no process that's that's the point oh really yeah they just come to you and they give you a check mark when they feel you're ready it's like, bitch, I don't – how – what number on that list did you need me to, to be at the top 1% in news on Google? Did you need, yeah. to be, need me to be number one for you to give me a check mark, or would you not even give me a fucking check mark then, you bricks? I think it's super weird how it works because I remember when I was working for the Knicks, I was standing next to, like, the guy who runs the Twitter and Instagram for the Knicks. And uh, one of the Knicks, I think it was, like, a rookie. I don't know. Maybe it was, like, Tim Hardaway Jr. or something like that. Like, tweeted something out, and Twitter didn't think it was actually him, so they took it down. And then, so like the Knicks guy or Tim Hardaway reached out to Twitter and was like, "Hey, this is really me tweeting yeah. this out." And I think I remember. I don't remember exactly how he was phrasing it, but he was like putting it like Twitter was basically like, "No, it's not you." Yeah. Like, stop fucking around. Dave and Chappelle said that happened like, to him too. Dave Chappelle said the same thing. He was oh, like, really? "There was." He said there was somebody else with a Dave Chappelle account, where everybody thought it was really Dave Chappelle. And he had just created his account. He has, like, no followers. He's like, bitch, I'm Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Like, yeah, it gets sloppy. But it's tough. It to, I mean, like, it's probably tough for them. Like, they probably got everybody like, hey, I'm Tim Hardaway Jr. I'm I'm Dave Chappelle. Like, I what mean, do you what do you got to ask him? A secret fucking yeah, code? I guess, like, I guess so. But So maybe they have a little bit more of an excuse. But, like, Wikipedia is just being dickish. Because, yeah. bitch, all, like, you see what the shit says. You see what it says on the page that people have created for me. Mm-hmm. Just 
If they didn't put the little things, add the fucking things, or go look and see if... Oh, it's not hard to find secular talk. You type it into Google, it's yeah. fucking right there. And it's not like... You see the, the Google verified numbers. You see we have over 176,000 subscribers. You see it's over 7 million views a month. Like, and by the way, Jenk had spoken about how he kind of faced the same thing, and the Young Turks faced the same thing when they were coming up uh, with when it came to news, because... Like, it's like a really is a good old boys club, man. Like, you know, for, for, it's one thing to get famous in any other area. Like, okay, you're a singer, you're an actor, you're in sports. Like, that's one thing. But in news, it's like, the idea is everything is, is set. It's solid. There's CNN, there's MSNBC, there's Fox News, there's, you know, it's on like talk school. radio, it's still the same names. Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity. Like, so any up and comers, especially if they're on the internet, they're almost dismissed by default because it's like, well, all you do is talk about politics and you're on the internet. So it's, it's almost like there's this, they look down at you. Like, you know, people in old media look down at people in new media like, oh, like, who do you think you are? You're just on the internet saying stuff, uploading it to YouTube, giving your opinion. Like, they're, that's not the same as us. We have a huge... Uh, you know, corporate system set up here and we have a process and we're all part of the establishment and we go to Washington and talk to politicians and stuff and it's like, <laughs> alright, you know what? What you're saying Fuck then you. is this, the system is more important than the individual and what the individual is doing because the reality is, when you look at the numbers, you they should be fucking embarrassed that I'm on that top 1% list with them. All it is is me, you, when we do this here, and Lilith, who does the social media stuff, for secular talk and then i have some connects to tyt obviously i'm part of the network but it's basically three people and it's overwhelmingly me doing the show right and we mm -hmm. we're on the same list as motherfucking cnn as new york times with you know eight thousand fucking employees and all these different people doing Interns all these different things and, uh, yeah. with a with a budget of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars they should be fucking embarrassed and the the fact that you know uh, <laughs> Somebody in the position I'm in, you know, they don't immediately get the recognition, at least via the, the Wikipedia, <laughs> Twitter. It's like, okay, that's, that just, it just, it doesn't make sense is my point. Like, I get it. Everybody no, can tell a I'm a little point. bitter about it. That The thing that put me over the edge is oh, that. it makes sense. The thing that put me over the edge, though, was just the fact that they had deleted the, the, the Wikipedia page. Yeah, you know? they went out of the way to delete that, the like that, That's what pissed me off. Like, it's one thing if it just wasn't there and nobody ever put it up. It's another thing if somebody puts it up and then it's fucking deleted and then that happens multiple fucking times. And as for Twitter, like, okay, I'll give them a pass because I only have 10,000 followers. That's really not that much for Twitter. You know, people are a lot, lot more than me. Still, it's but yeah, it's, yeah, it's getting to the point where like, okay, well, at what point? Like, I'm, I'm going to pass 200,000 subs on YouTube very soon. I, like you maybe know. you get a yellow check mark or some shit as opposed to <laughs> yeah. whatever a blue check it's mark. A starter like, kit. Like, Give me training st wheels. St yeah, seriously. Like start to notify it. Like take some fucking, like notice it now before it blows the fuck up. And then it's just like you know someone makes a fake account and you have to avoid and, a situation and, where right. That's the main thing. Is like there's gonna. I've already we've already hit that point. I'm not gonna get, say the name and give anybody credit here, but we we already know that's happened multiple times where I've been impersonated and stuff like that. So, oh really? Yeah. So it's like you know. If that if I'm meeting the main bar for why I should have X, then fucking give me X. But I get it. They might be overwhelmed. They don't have nearly as many people working for them. But Wikipedia's got to get their fucking shit together because fuck Wikipedia. They go out of their way, man. And look, I'm I've been a big defender of Wikipedia for a very long time because you know how everybody says about Wikipedia, like it's come on, it's Wikipedia. You're gonna trust them. <laughs> Well, in school, he'd be like, well, don't source Wikipedia. Yeah, you uh, not source Wikipedia. I mean, it's Wikipedia. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've said this time and time again, as long as the page says, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, it's just as good as any other encyclopedia. It only becomes a problem when it says on the top of the page, this issue may have, this article may have issues because they didn't, don't have these citations. It's, it's using old sources. Like, they'll tell, if the article's not on point, it's going to tell you the article's not on point. Then you don't source it. Then you don't source it. But if it says, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, that means their people did it. And they checked it. And everything's good. So it's just as good as any other encyclopedia. 
And most of the pages you'll see, if you go on there, usually when you search for something, it says from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, which means mm -hmm. it's just as valid as any other fucking encyclopedia. So if you're one of those people who always defaults to, oh, I am Wikipedia, I'm not good as a fucking Wikipedia, fuck off, blow me. <laughs> so I've had people say that to me in, in arguments or discussions or debates on Twitter where we'll be talking about a concept. I'll send it to them. It'll be a good Wikipedia page. That's from oh Wikipedia. That's like, not oh, I didn't know that was a form of argument, citing Wikipedia. Bitch, stop. It's like, it's just a snotty thing to say where they think it makes sense, but it doesn't yeah, make any out. sense. It's an Exactly, it's an absolute cop-out where they think like, well, if that's your source, it's like, no, bitch, you, I put you in a corner, I proved you wrong, and now you're like, how do I get out of this? I don't know, I'll just say, oh, Wikipedia, bad. Okay, well, you're a fucking child, and I'm done with the conversation with you then. Yeah. I just got angry over Wikipedia. That's fucked up. <laughs> no, they're fucking assholes. You think there's, I mean, maybe there's like some corporate fucking shit behind it that nah, they. I don't think so. Somebody told me, somebody sent me a link saying that the, one of the heads of it is like a, a, Christ, a super Christian guy. I don't know. I don't care. I don't think that has anything to do with it. Oh, really? Because uh, if that did, that means everybody who's secular and famous wouldn't have their shit up there. Of course, they all do. So it's not yeah. that, but either way, they should get their shit together. Um, but anyway, that's all I got, man. Again, you got anything else real quick or we're all No, stuck? I mean, no, it's everything. That's all right, dope. sweet. I'm going to watch, uh, have, have, did you watch that, uh, The Walking Dead's not back yet, but did you watch oh, the Oh, Fear one? of the Walking Dead? Yeah. I don't want to, like, I watched it. I started um, it, yeah. I, I watched it, so I'm going to watch the one tonight, too. Would you, I mean, like, I thought the end of the episode was dope, but I just don't want to invest my fucking time into something that might go fucking 20 seasons. Now, you know what shit. it is, though? I hear you on that. But I'm, I hate to say this, but it's true. Because of the first Walking Dead, I'm already invested in this, this one now. Because really? from the first time they played the ad for Fear the Walking Dead, the first commercial they played, yeah, I was in. Because it was really? Yes, because it was during the, you know, the normal Walking Dead. Yeah. And they go on to say, there was an article about this this week, they link up. There's going to be a new character that's introduced in The Walking Dead which you're going to see in Fear the Walking Dead. So there, oh. there's there's connection, there's plot connection. There's like crossover, and yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I was confused as fuck because I thought this lady who's in the Fear of the Walking Dead, like the mother of this uh, the coke kid or whatever, mm -hmm. she looks exactly yep. like, yep. Yep. do you remember the cop who sliced Beth's throat? The cop who sliced Beth. Yeah, that's one. Is that might be her? Isn't that her? It, or no? Dude, it's not. It's not. It's not her. Then why did, did they pick her? It looks. I don't I know. It was her. For like twenty minutes of the episode, I was on IMBD and I was like searching both actresses' names, and I was like texting one of my friends who watched The Walking Dead, and I was like, "This is her," and he was like, "Dude, it's not." And I was like, "It's her, but it's not her." <laughs> but, that's crazy because I thought the same thing. In fact, I was convinced that that right? was another thing that linked up. Yeah, but, but by the I way, really, for the uh, record. I don't know what you think, but I'm still I like The Walking Dead more still at this point. Like You like Walking Dead more? The Walking Dead so far, in my opinion like the first episode of The Walking Dead is superior to the first episode of Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, hundred percent. The first episode. Yeah, you agree yeah, with that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that first episode of Walking Dead was fire and the whole season one of Walking Dead was fire. But I'm curious how they're gonna do it from here on out. Like are they gonna go to different people in the same time span? Or are they gonna go back to the same people as this progresses? So you what do you mean? Saying? Like, are they gonna like are they gonna run into Rick or something like no, that? No, 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 not not that. So, when they like the episode tonight, for example, are they gonna take mm -hmm. the same characters that we saw from last week and continue oh, or show to follow? Another are they gonna family. follow these characters until the end of the season, or are they gonna go with different groups of characters and carry mm -hmm. that forward in the same time frame here? Interesting. Because I mean, at a I... certain point, it just becomes The Walking Dead. Like once you get past the threshold of X amount of people being killed, X amount of people That's dying. True. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, like so. That's I, a real good point, dude. So, it's like eventually it's just people surviving from zombies. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So like, <laughs> do you, at some point you go, okay, so now you got the story for this group. Now let's go to another group and you learn about them. That's interesting. I mean, from what I saw in the previews, is they keep following like that one family. You know, the principal, like mm, I think, yeah. turns into a zombie. It's gonna be interesting. I, I thought it was cool. It's cool. Seeing them like not knowing anything about zombies and watching like a YouTube video of someone getting shot forty times and like that's not real. That's just a YouTube video. Yeah, dude, it's hard. Like to be a good writer, 
is god it's so fucking hard like okay i gotta make this translate to people where they watch it and they can they have to keep going like every 10 minutes or so like oh shit like i can't believe that happened and they're into it like yeah. i can't see myself like writing something that's that compelling i just i can't do it i wouldn't be able to develop a plot enough especially writing backwards like he he started with the walking dead which is you know post-apocalypse and now it's like all right let's try and make some more money and do it pre-apocalypse and it's like and you got to yeah. come up with something that's compelling. It has to be something that's like going to keep people's interest and stuff. I couldn't do that, man. That, it has that, to relate to everybody too. I mean, like, yeah, exactly. It's not just. It can't be very specific. Like, and yeah. and that's what you know why I think writing is a very specific kind of talent that I just don't have. Like, I don't have musical talent. I don't have writing talent in that way. Like, I tell people all the time. Even like, if people like for me to write political articles, my gut instinct, what I do is I'm I'm a I'm a bullet point guy. Like, when I'm prepping for the show, I have, like, f I'm 40% scripted, I say. So it's like, I have quotes from the article, bullet points of facts, and my gut instinct is always, okay, I got to make a point. How do I argue this? I write, like, maybe a half a paragraph, and then I go right to bullet points. Boom, 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 boom. So you can't put me in a situation where <laughs> it's like, okay, write an article, write a political article where you make a case in an article. Because yeah, I'll always tough. end up saying, okay, I need to, to structure my argument, and I always revert to bullet points. So I don't have, the, like, I don't have a writing flow or writing rhythm. My, my only rhythm when it comes to communicating is talking. I'm just better at a, a talking rhythm. I have a talking cadence or whatever the fuck you call it. Yeah, well, some people would say that's a fucking hard art to perform and do also. Exactly. You know, like, like, I'm sure writers say, I don't know how you talk like the way you talk. But it's but that's the thing is like to to each their yeah, own and everybody's exactly. got their own little talent like you know Beyonce, she's amazingly talented when it comes to music. Give her a microphone, give her two hours, and put a camera on and say talk about politics. You yeah. won't be entertained. <laughs> well, people say that about Michael Jordan or something like that. Like he's fucking or well, well for Wayne Gretzky, he was one of the best hockey players ever. You know he played the sport great, but he became a coach and didn't know how to coach it. Yeah, couldn't, like you just said, say Jordan it. with uh, with the Bobcats. Yeah. Right? They were just Sucks. <laughs> the worst ever for so long. All right, guys. We love you to death. Um, we'll see, Cor. I'm I'm going on vacation on... Oh, where are you out to? <sighs> no, I'm not even... going away, oh, away just... but I will be playing golf and stuff, and I might like nice. record some of it and put it on YouTube just for the fuck of it, and everybody can yeah. laugh at me. Um, no, they won't laugh at your golf game. <laughs> so the week of the... Four so I'm, I actually have a wedding to go to, and then I'm going on vacation that week of the 14th. Mm -hmm. Um... But I have like stuff I got to do leading up to that in order to get ready for the vacation because I'm still gonna have stuff to be released on YouTube the entire time while I'm gone, so people yeah. won't miss me too much. Um, <laughs> not that they will, but I'm just gonna throw it out there anyway. Um, so I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not 100% sure we'll do a podcast uh, next week or the week after, or but we'll play it by year. Does that yeah, sound good? Yeah, sounds good. All right, sounds awesome guys. Good. We love all of you. Um, we'll see you when we see you, and suck my balls.